Thank you so much for joining us here on Idaho Today. We begin our conversation on microaggression. It might be a new word for some, but it is a word that we should all know. Microaggression is very powerful. It can have a massive impact on your relationships and how you see others in the world and how you also see yourself. I recently had the honor and the pleasure of speaking with Atalia Pomoa. She's an expert who knows a lot about microaggression and what we can all do to strengthen our communication with each other. Atala, thank you so much for joining us. I'm very excited about sharing this message and conversation with our viewership. And in full transparency for our viewers, I had the pleasure of joining Atala and some of her teammates in a conversation with other KTVB leaders about microaggression. And Atala, I really think that this is gonna be a new term for a lot of people today. So explain what is microaggression? So first off, it's a new term for a lot of us. And for myself as a DEI practitioner and DEI consultant, it's a word that we use quite often. And it really is basically subtle, verbal, sometimes nonverbal messages. And they're generally communicated toward or about a person from an underrepresented group or sometimes we say marginalized identity group. So it's usually unintentional. So that means it's something that we do frequently, right? All of us do it. And we're well-meaning when we do. We have good intention. Um, it might be intended to be a compliment, right? You might be referring to the way someone looks or someone's ability, not knowing that because that person is a member of an underrepresented group, that that might actually be an insult. Um, sometimes micro Aggressions are based on or they are generally based on stereotypes and what we also call unconscious bias. Okay. All right. So let's help others understand what might really be a microaggression. So give an example of how someone might be showing a microaggression and not even being aware of it. So, for instance, and these are things that people actually have said, right? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, someone who identifies as Asian being told, oh, I know you can handle that because you're really good at math, yeah. right? And yeah. so that sounds like what? That sounds like a compliment, right? Being good at something is generally considered to be good, right? That sounds like a compliment. But the stereotype is that that person should be good at it because of their background. And, you know, we've gotten feedback from folks who are from that background who say things like, you know, I'm artistic, I'm creative, I'm a lot of different things, but people box me in to, um, you know, logical, mathematical kind of thinking or that I'm good at math or science when I'm a person. And so that's the thing about microaggressions. It boxes people in based on stereotypes, like I said earlier, um, that are well-intentioned, but are based on, you know, just different messages that we've received we've received over time. So they could be education um, based on maybe just things that we heard growing up, you know, in our family structures, in our neighborhoods. They can also be cultural as well. And we don't even realize that we're learning them. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it can go to something like a physicality, like someone being tall, right? Where you're like, oh, you're tall. So you must play basketball or you must be good at basketball. It's like, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that, right? Well, that's the one that I always use because it, you all may not be able to tell, but I'm six feet tall and I have been hearing that microaggression since I was about 10 or 11 years old. Mm -hmm. So you can only imagine. And the thing about it is, um, I actually like volleyball. Yeah, there right? you go. <laughs> I assume that I play volleyball. And that's not the, you know, that's a very more gentle microaggression. Mm -hmm. But think about microaggressions that are based on people's skin color mm -hmm. or based on people's ability mm -hmm. or people's gender or sexual orientation, especially possibly in the workplace or just in everyday life. Some of these microaggressions can be very damaging. Mm -hmm. And what we like to focus on, what I wanna ask the audience today to focus on is the impact. So you or I may be the first person, or this may be the first time I should say, that you may have shared this with a particular person, but consider this, how many times has that person possibly heard that microaggression before. And so we want to think about it from this perspective. You know, you're a good person, right? I'm a good person. So I didn't intend to hurt this person's feeling. But if we think more about 
the uh, impact versus the intention, then the focus becomes on the person who was microaggressed against.